Leadership begins when we stop blaming others or making excuses. We have the power to see patterns in chaos and to find hope in the new patterns that we discover. How can we today embody evocative leadership? Teachings. This is an exchange. We're exchanging ideas today. This is about how we can attract people that we can then share and explore and mine our wisdom together. We're exchanging curiosity. It's about pattern. It's about the space between each and one of us. It's about the individual and the collective. It's about how there's a kind of fractal movement in evocative leadership. Do we need tangible results or do we need questions? Einstein said you can't solve problems at the same level of thinking uh, that the cause of the problems. And I see dialogue as a way of getting to uh, that, that level of thinking. Leadership isn't just in your head. The body is central. Having read the right books or being clever cognitively isn't really enough. system, every organization, most social encounters have their own underlying rhythm, 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 rhythm. Now what are the problems about leadership? What are the poisons? Is that we think that leadership resides in leaders. So we're always looking for the person who's going to sort out our organisation, the person who's going to sort out Britain. But leadership is never in an individual. It is always relational. We need to let go of our competition and bring in collaboration. Collective energy is a reality. Collective consciousness is a reality. And it, it touches us, but in the culture we now have, it doesn't depend on it a great deal. We need to reduce our reliance on hierarchy and bring shared leadership. We need to open the door to all of us becoming contributors rather than staying in our passivity. that has brought us to this point will not take us beyond this point. That doesn't mean that traditional directive, pace-setting leadership is wrong or is no longer important. I think there is a place for it. But we need something on top of that. That's this evocative leadership that deals with the new complexities and the volatility and the uncertainty. The answers that I can come up with are limited by the size of my experience and my brain. So actually the experience is out there. It's the collective intelligence somehow we need to we need to access it's absolutely critical it's not about me and my self-interest it's about us and our home it's very important in this time that this group of people and many other like it really step forward and continue to be linked together and and develop this deeper understanding of who we are and what we're called to in this time. None of us can simply stand aside and wait any longer.
the 80 of us got round in a circle. It was very special. You could really feel. You could almost cut the energy with a knife. We were refreshed, inspired, a little bit thoughtful I was around certain areas. Mostly I was affected today in my body. Uh, something about how I hold myself as a leader with a vision, vision for education. Not going away with an answer is actually something very valuable for me because I think it leaves the door open to more. So I think this is nothing more than catching glimpses of pieces of a puzzle, things that they hadn't thought of or joined up before, and a glimpse that there potentially is a new era of leadership showing itself. Just take some time out for yourself to say, am I making a difference that I could be making and that I want to be making in the world? And who do I have to have alongside me to make that difference?